you were actually an early contributor uh, to PyTorch Core, which made yeah. it might have kind of been some of your interest in PyTorch. And you wrote a book, Deep Learning with PyTorch, um, which was Manning Publications. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, can you elaborate a little bit <laughs> on the suite of products that Lightning AI offers? Um, and, you know, what kinds of companies, what kinds of teams, what kinds of data scientists that we have listening on this show should these different products interest? Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So um, PyTorch Lightning was born and was released, was born many years before, uh, created by William Falcon, the CEO and founder of Lightning AI. And it was officially released in no, as open source in 2019. And back then, uh, it was already kind of battle tested because uh, William created it while he was interning at, uh, 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 it was actually at uh, FAIR, uh, Facebook AI lab. And um, he was doing a PhD at NYU. So uh, he had the, uh, he had access to a ton of GPUs. And so they, they were doing self-supervised learning, mostly in the vision space. And the need there was to train over you know, thousands of GPUs, which sounded crazy back then. And now it's like a medium-sized training job. Um, but a lot of the struggle of, uh, about setting up things that would work seamlessly on a single node and multiple nodes, um, sampling data correctly, setting things up correctly so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot and you can focus on the modeling task and so on. Um, all these things were like battle tested in PyTorch Lightning back then. So when it came out, it immediately resonated with the people that were doing small and, and large uh, training jobs. Uh, and incidentally, I got to know PyTorch Lightning before I got to know William because uh, my company in Italy, Orobix, uh, landed on PyTorch Lightning to standardize uh, their training code. And this happened over and over so that now we are at 150 million downloads uh, and nine, do 9 million downloads per month, which is a very large. It's wild. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very wild. And in fact, uh, PyTorch Lightning became one of the ways uh, PyTorch lands in organizations because PyTorch Lightning doesn't wrap PyTorch. So it, you know, uh, if you don't know PyTorch Lightning, you may think that it's uh, a wrapper around PyTorch, but you still write your model in pure PyTorch. It just organizes your PyTorch code so that you, it, if you break it up in, into hooks, into different lifecycle moments, and you have, you, you, you have every piece of code organized for, oh, I need to instantiate optimizers, I need to run a training, uh, training step, and so on, then the trainer, the PyTorch Lightning trainer, will know what to call when, right? And so it it can take care of a lot of engineering aspects and then calling to your code when it's the right time. And that takes away a lot of surface area for mistakes. That's ultimately what PyTorch Line is good at. Uh, because you need don't need to know what you shouldn't be worried about unless you want to really get into the details, which you still can. Uh, but you know, for the most part, you should focus on what, what's your task. Uh, and, uh, and, and as a researcher or a person at a company, um, uh, I want to solve my problem and not necessarily uh, everyone has to be an expert at distributed training, right? Yeah, yeah. So to kind of recap that back to you, PyTorch Lightning, open source framework for Python. It works with PyTorch, very popular deep learning, <clears throat> deep learning library. And PyTorch Lightning allows you to avoid mistakes as you train models, as you deploy models, as you parallelize model training or deployment across Correct. many GPUs, which is common, especially with large language models, which are you know very large deep learning models that probably most people who've listened to the show have already heard of, things like <laughs> uh, GPT-4 and the Llama architectures in terms of open source ones. And so PyTorch Lightning supports that whole ecosystem. And yeah, it's one that I love, one that I've taught on actually when you and I met, Luca, the only time that we've right. met in person was at ODSC East in Boston earlier this year, the Open Data Science Conference. And one of the things that I was doing at that conference was I was doing a day-long training yeah, on large language models featuring, yeah, PyTorch Lighting. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, and then out of there, 
um, you know, this vibe of allowing teams to iterate as quickly as possible, leaving some of the details to when you actually need to care for those, but then allowing you to iterate on, on what you need to do has become kind of the vibe uh, for whatever Lightning AI does. And that applies to studios because, you know, once you have your training code that is uh, uh, easy to manage, easy to scale, you need to make it run somewhere, right? And so the problem of getting access to compute, getting data to move quickly and seamlessly, uh, having the having access to multiple machines as easily as you would have access to your laptop uh, is what Lightning Studio is for. So the same uh, mental model that you need to have about uh, PyTorch Lightning simplifying distributed training, you, you can use uh, when you think about Lightning Studios and the way it simplifies using cloud computing resources. And so we make it as easy as it, it is to use your laptop, but now you have a thousand laptops that can work in parallel because you have access to the cloud. Yeah, and something that I am going to absolutely be doing the next time I offer that same training, which I haven't yet again this year, is updating everything that I was doing. The, the kind of final module that I cover in my training involves parallelization and uh, it sounds like Lightning Studios is, is going to be by far the easiest way for me to be uh, demonstrating that to our audience and having them hook in. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's not just for training, right? Right now we're like uh, discovering things in a you know a chronological order, but Lightning Studios is really a development and production environment for building AI from training to deployment to building compound systems. It's kind of the its sweet spot is building AI systems in general, and there's a lot of need for that. And uh, I think we're offering a very, very smooth experience. Um, and we're rolling out new features all the time. So it's a great time to, uh, uh, to get into it and uh, try it out. It's very uh, self-serve. You can sign up, get free credits. So uh, we are seeing a lot of people doing that. And uh, yeah, and as far as the rest of the ecosystem, you don't have to use PyTorch Lightning on studios and you don't have to use studios to be able to use PyTorch Lightning. But if you use them together, it's kind of magical. You can just scale uh, seamlessly. Same thing for Litzer, which is kind of the PyTorch Lightning for uh, serving uh, that we launched earlier this year. Uh, it already is, uh, it, it's already being used uh, by a lot of people. Uh, it, it's a very simple uh, framework for serving kind of like Torser, but it's very, very simple. Its internals are uh, as tight and minimal as possible. And that allows contributors to come in and to you know, make it evolve easily. And at the same time, it's very fast. And so it's faster, generally faster than Torser from our uh, uh, benchmarks. Uh, not because we want to compete, but just because I want to, you know, you, you don't have to worry that it being simple means that it's you're leaving performance on the table. That's not the case. And so I think uh, that's a very nice way to uh, have people building models or building systems uh, serve, serve them through an API without having to worry about, oh, you know, how do I manage workers? How, how do I uh, serialize data and so on? Yeah, you, you need to uh, just implement a few hooks. Again, same thing as before. And, uh, and then we give you the performance and uh, reduce the surface area for mistakes. Nice, and I, I, it slipped past me as you were describing this. All of this that you're describing here, this, this most recent product, what's that called again? Litserve. Litserve, Litserve, Litserve. Yes, 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 yeah. of course. And so we have the, others, but you know, we don't have to make the list. It's just, you, know, you need to understand <laughs> that when you come to our products, they tend to be minimal and they tend to make you not worry about certain things so that you can move faster. That's, that's the whole thing you can expect from us. Excellent. So what do you think it is about PyTorch Lightning that allowed it to be able to grow so meteorically quickly? Um, you know, in just a few years, going from its inception with Will Falcone, as you mentioned, the CEO of Lightning AI, uh, being at NYU, being at Meta in the, at, well, at the time, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook yep. AI Research Fair, you know, this iconic lab, and he's developing this op open source tooling from scratch and now getting 9 million downloads a month. What do you think it is that contributed to that 
uh, rise. Is it the kinds of features that you just described where people are seeing, you know, this just makes my life so much easier. It makes it so much easier to avoid mistakes. Um, yeah. Is there anything else in addition around the community or? Yeah. So I think one of the things will excel at uh, repeatedly. So is be able to ship things minimally fully, uh, in a fully polished way. So he would always push everyone uh, to get to something that is finished from the point of view of a product. So even the README, we spent a long time on the Readmes. Uh, we spent a long time on polishing the documentation and so on. And so that's, I think, the, the first step into a product is not just the code or the abstractions, it's the whole experience. Um, and then the, the other thing is, yes, you need to speak to struggles. And I think PyTorch Lightning speaks to some of the struggles, right? That you have while uh, doing the work of, uh, you know, training or for lead serve serving and so on. So if you can avoid worrying about something and focus on the thing you want to focus on, that that's the kind of value without being too opinionated. And so you you need to kind of strive. That that's a bit of an art, right? You need to be allow like allow users to do what they want to do at the same time. Um, uh, taking some of the burden away. Um, and I think if you look back in 2019, there were like five or six frameworks, training frameworks. Uh, and then ChatGPT came, Gen AI came, some of the frameworks survived that shift, some less so. And I think PyTorch Line is one of the, the ones that, that did. And I think at this day and age, uh, <laughs> it's much less common to find people in teams that want to write one from scratch because the attention has shifted somewhere else. And so, you know, PyTorch Lightning was there at the right time with the right level of maturity, with the right level of user polish and experience. Um, and that's, I think, what brought it to be one of the leading frameworks. 